G'day, it's Dan Beeston here for Mac Tuts Plus. Now, I record a lot of podcasts and I do interviews. Now, sometimes you can't get into the same room with your interviewees, so you need to set up a telecommunications solution. The easiest one is Skype. It's free to speak with anyone around the world who also uses Skype, and it's pretty cheap to call landline phones as well. Now, if your interviewee is set up to record their end, then there's no problem. You just have to hit record on your audio software and grab your side of the conversation, and they can save it at their end and send it to you. You'll get a better quality of audio, but sometimes this simply isn't possible, or you'd like a fail-safe track just in case something goes pear-shaped along the way. What we need to do is record the audio stream coming from Skype, and there are a number of ways to do this. The first and easiest way is using a program called Hijack Pro. Audio Hijack Pro from Rogue Amoeba allows you to record the audio from any one particular program on your Mac. You can download it from rogueamoeba.com and try out the trial version. When you open it up, you'll see a list of all the different applications that you can record. There's a quick record where you can record any audio that your Mac creates at all, or you can select just the application you want. In our case, we want Skype. So we can select our application. We'll select the program that we want to use. Go down to Skype. And done, it's right there. Then it's as simple as hitting record. It will open up Skype for you. And we can make a test call. Hi, it's Dan Beeston again. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that Miss Hendricks got my flowers. Um, she should have my number. Uh, it's it's on the card. Hi, it's Dan Beeston. Great, so that's working fine. If Audio Hijack's been recording properly, which it has, we can stop it, stop it from hijacking, and open up our music directory. Go into Audio Hijack. And there we have our file. The problem is, if we open it up in our program of choice, you might see a problem here. Back to you. Hi, it's Dan Beeston. See the problem? Both sides of the conversation are being recorded in mono. This means that if the volume or quality of one track is not similar to the other, then editing it is going to be an exercise in frustration. What I prefer to do is record using Audacity. Audacity is very good at saving as it records, so if there's a crash, you should be able to recover most, if not all, of what you record. It also allows me to keep an eye on the waveform and to record each side of the conversation into a separate track. Let's have a closer look at what's going on. So at the moment, what we can do is we can use Skype. Now we can record into Skype so that the other end of our phone call can hear us and we can hear Skype as it goes to the headphones. Also, we can hit record on Audacity and Audacity will listen to our microphone and record to it. The only problem is we need to be able to get the audio stream from Skype into Audacity. The problem is there's no device here. Skype's a program, Audacity's a program, but neither of them are coded in such a way that they can move information from one program to another. Skype is designed so that it can send audio content to a speaker, and Audacity is designed so that it can receive audio from a microphone. Now, imagine, if you will, that we had a, uh, another room in the house that was completely silent, and we could run a signal from Skype to a speaker in that silent room. And then every noise that that speaker made was picked up by a microphone that we could then send into Audacity. Well, then we'd be able to get the sound signal from Skype to Audacity. Well, the good news is that we can do that and we're not gonna lose any quality from this process of getting the sound from the speaker to the microphone because we're going to set up a virtual sound device using Soundflower from cycling74.com. 
Download Soundflower, install it. You may need to do a restart to get it to work. But once you do, under your audio settings, you will see that there is a Soundflower 2 channel and if you're really eager, a Soundflower 64 channel set of speakers. So any sound sent to Soundflower will go straight into that program. Also, in your input, you'll also find your two channels and your 64 channels. So anything that you record will be set to Soundflower as well. So let's go set that up. We'll go to Skype, go to our preferences, and we want all of the sound from Skype to go to Soundflower. Then we'll go to Audacity, go to Preferences, and we'll change our microphone or recording device to Soundflower. Now when we use Skype and we do our test call, and we start to record, Audacity is able to pick up that signal. The only problem is I can't hear Skype and Audacity is not picking up my microphone. So what we need is two streams of audio. The way to do that is with aggregate devices. Aggregate devices can be found under Applications, Utilities, and audio MIDI setup. Now you might see the MIDI window, but we don't need that one. We, what we need is the audio window. Here you should see all your microphones and output devices. So this is the built-in input of my Mac Mini. This is the speaker jack on my Mac Mini. This is my USB microphone. And here we find Soundflower. What we need here is we need to combine the headphones that I'm listening to and the sound that we're getting out of Skype. So click on the plus button and we'll create a multi-output device. From the multi-output device, we want the built-in output and Soundflower. Now we set up our aggregate device and this sets up our listening devices. So. Our microphone will be listening, it will be listening to my voice, and Soundflower will be listening to Skype. Now notice these options up the top, the clock source and the sample rate. Now usually you should be able to leave them on default, but when you do a test, make sure that you test it for a couple of minutes. Because if the clock source gets confused or the sample rate isn't quite right, it can cause distortion in your recording. That'll end up sounding a little bit like a Dalek. The really tricky thing is that it won't be immediately apparent and it can get out of sync over the course of a couple of minutes. So make sure you do do some trials before recording anything that you can't lose. Now Audacity is not very good at keeping up with changes to your devices. If we go to Preferences, we'll note that there are no aggregate devices available for us. So We'll close that and restart it. And now under our preferences, under devices, we should be able to select our aggregate device for recording. Then we'll go into Skype, go to our preferences, and we can set our speakers to multi-output device. So that means that all the sound from Skype is going to our headphones, but it's also going to Soundflower to be recorded by Audacity. That is all set up now. We'll go to Audacity, hit record. Ah, but the problem is that it's only recording my microphone. It's not gonna be recording Skype yet. Because it's an aggregate device, it means that there are two channels from Soundflower and one from the microphone. So you can select three and record again, and you'll have three coming through. Let's start up Skype, do our test call. I can hear that, and so can Audacity. Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Great, so 
We're now recording both my voice and Skype. We can stop that. That third channel is not needed. But sometimes these channels will be shuffled. One of those channels is going to be empty or it's going to be duplicating the content from Skype. But now we have our waveform from Skype and our waveform from me. Now there are a couple more things to re remember when you're doing this. Number one, it can be illegal to record someone's voice if they don't know that they're being recorded. Be mindful of the legalities of recording others depending on your location and their location. Number two, Wear some headphones. I can't stress this enough. If you record with speakers, your interviewee's voice will come out of your speakers and bleed back into the microphone, giving a very irritating echo sound. If your mic is sensitive enough, it can even bleed through if your headphones aren't tight. I use earbuds to record and keep them as low as I can to keep that echo out of the recording. So there you go. You'll be able to record Skype, and if you run into any problems, please mention them in the comments and I'll help you out. This is Dan Beeston for MacTuts Plus.